Good afternoon, everyone. Awesome to see you guys. Uh, good afternoon to people joining us on the stream as well. Please stand with us. We'll start with a song of praise. Um, hope you guys are doing well. We've been having amazing weather this weekend. But hopefully you, your goodness isn't dependent on the weather. <laughs> as it is for many people. Um, let's just say hello to someone next to us, someone you don't know. We're, just be aware that we are with the church. That we are family. This is, we're together. Yeah. We'll start with prayer. Thank you, Father, for this beautiful day you've made. We thank you that we can gather in your presence today, Father. We thank you that your presence was here before we even entered, Father. And thank you that the songs we sing aren't uh, empty words, but uh, they carry weight, Father, because they glorify you. Father, we desire to see your glory today, Father. We desire to give you glory in Jesus' name. Help us open our eyes. Open our spiritual eyes and ears to, to hear and see you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. forever perfect your praise unceasing you are worthy faithful through tribulations you are faithful your love will move just like the mountain you're ever with us you are faithful Dances don't determine what's due Through joy and tragedy You're faithful and true Oh, we bring our praise We bring our praise to you Oh, we bring our praise Sovereign Creator, Savior You are sovereign Able to use all things for our good. You bring the dead to life, your sovereign. We bring an offering of praise to you. Our circumstances don't determine what's due. Through joy and tragedy, you're faithful and true. Oh, we bring our praise. Don't determine what's due 
through joy and tragedy, you're faithful and true. Oh, we bring our praise, we bring our praise to you. We bring an offering of praise to you. Our circumstances don't determine what's due. Through joy and tragedy, you're faithful and true. Oh, we bring our praise. take a break for announcements and we'll continue after that hello everyone uh, welcome here this afternoon um, and we also want to say welcome to all the new visitors any new visitors this afternoon you want to put your hand up if you yeah maybe a little bit higher <laughs> We just want to say it's really awesome to see new visitors. After the year that we've had, every single Sunday we have new people joining um, our services. It's really awesome, guys. There we go. Okay. We also have uh, Kids Church this afternoon. Um, after the worship, the kids go out that side door. I think everyone more or less knows that, but then Stefan will be doing kids' church this afternoon, and there is also a nought to three, um, like a mother's room, where you can watch the service, and um, the kiddies can comfortably play with some toys and so on, so out that door over there. Okay, uh, intercession, uh, we have intercession on Tuesday night, um, uh, we pray for Utrecht, or for the church, um, every Tuesday at seven, from seven to eight, um, at Dirk Jan and Renee's house, slot line, or on Zoom. Um, and then we also have small groups. We have um, different groups. If you would like to join, it's um, I, I must say the families groups not going that well at the moment. But I, I think for us as a, uh, like the place where I found you can really connect with people and then discover your uh, your uh, church families in a small group and where you get to share and learn about each other and learn about God. So it's really something um, to join up. Um, it's really worth it. So we have different small groups. Uh, we have a women's group that is uh, online at the moment. Um, there's an au pairs group. I think also online, yeah. Um, there's students, there is young working, an e-small group, and then the family group. Um, I think the students have all stopped, mostly started up, Joffrey said. Um, they get to meet each other um, once a week. Uh, if not, then on Zoom. So if you want to sign up, contract, contact Joffrey, um, or go and uh, register via Shofar online, don't know. And then on the 25th of September, we have um, Encounter One. Sorry? Oh, good. Yeah. Good. <laughs> if you would like to help to facilitate it, if you've done all the encounters, you are welcome to sign up at the back where we have tea and coffee. At the info table, you can go and sign your name up to help to facilitate um, the, uh, with the Encounter One. And if you haven't attended that, it's also really um, worth attending. Um, you get to uh, learn more about what Shofar uh, believe in. And uh, there's four different topics, Salf salvation, baptism, the Holy Spirit, and discipleship. So it's really worth attending that on the 25th of September from 10 to half past four at uh, Slotlan uh, Renee and Dirkian. Then we also have a small leader, uh, small group leader training. Um, so if you want to become a, a small group a leader, it's good to attend. But even if you don't want to become a leader, it's also good to 
to see what a small group family is all about. And um, so that'll be on Saturday, 16th of October, from 4 to 2, also in Slotlan with Dirk Jan and Rene. And then we really need volunteers. Um, to have a Sunday service, it's not just a pitching up and everything falls in place. We actually have a team of people every Sunday that get things in place. We have people sitting at the back of the sound desk there. So we need people there. We need people for kids' church. We need, um, for the tea and coffee at the end, we need people to prep before the time and after the time. Because, I mean, otherwise we can't have a visit after church. So we, if, you wanna, if you really feel God's laying that on your heart, please come sign your, nine, your name up also at the back where the tea and coffee is. There's a list there. Um, so yeah, hope to see your name there. No pressure. Okay, and then after, after church we can have tea and coffee. We'd love to, have, uh, to find out who you are and just have uh, some fellowship after church. So I hope to see you there. Okay. And, oh, there's an info table. No, there's not an info table, sorry. Um, if you have any questions, you can contact Dirk Jan or Rene. Um, uh, their numbers will be up there. If you have any questions or even any one of us that you know the worship or me or whoever, you can always ask us any questions. And it's Dirk Jan for the offering message. Good afternoon to all of you. The scripture that I would like to use this afternoon is the one which is coming out of Acts 3 verses 6. It was a beggar who was asking Peter and John for money. And then Peter said, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And he rose up and he walked. He was... 40 years old approximately and he rose up and he walked because Peter gave to him whatever was necessary that he was needing the offering we think it's about money it's about what we're giving to the church so that the church can do the things what the church would like to do pay the rental pay for your coffee and your cookies afterwards at the sermon yes we're paying those things with it as well but the main thing is your heart that your heart should be ready because you're giving out of your heart. And if somebody has got a need which you find in the world and you can satisfy that need, you can help them because God has provided to you that you can, what you've received from God, you can give it through to Him. Then you're giving an offering. And maybe you say, well, I haven't got money and I'm in the church but I cannot give any money you've seen the list of the volunteers just now, then you can help over there. Then you can say, I can give something of my time to God and for the church. God has given each and every one something to us, what we can give to the church and to the world around us. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, that you are a God who is the provider. You give whatever we need that we can give it through to other people. We can give it to the church, that it can be used if it is money. We can give time to the church. But we also can give to the one which we can see outside, who maybe needs a prayer, a prayer for healing or encouragement, or maybe just a visit, or maybe just a cup of coffee and just talking, that a person can just share what is on his or her heart. Father, there's so many things which you're giving us. And it's actually a small offering what we're doing then. If we give it to the church or to the people around us. Thank you, Father, that you provide. And that we can receive from you and give it through to the people around us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you've got some cash, which is nowadays hardly seen, there is offering back at the back behind the media table. You can put it in there. If you say you've got a pin card and you would like to transfer some money, we've got a facility on that same table as well. If you say you would like to transfer some money, you can go onto the website and there you can see our D 
details, banking details, it's on the home page at the left bottom with all the links. If you've never been on the website, then I would encourage you to go and have a look on the website and see what we've got, where you can communicate with us. But the banking details are over there as well. And if you're a visitor this afternoon, do not feel obliged to give. Let it be a week that you can give an offering to God. Thank you. Then we are going to ask Samantha to come. We're going to send her. And if I'm going correctly, you're going to Dublin. You're going to study over there. We're going to send her with a blessing that she can enter over there with a blessing. And each and every one who would like to pray with us, then I'm inviting you to come forward, stand with us, that we can pray a blessing over her. Thank you. Sorry, Geoffrey, it seems to me he doesn't want to listen to me. <laughs> so we will use this microphone. Is it, is it working now? Thanks a lot. When I was praying for you, Samantha, God gave me Matthew 28, verses 5. And it says over there, but the angel answered and said to the woman, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. And this is the blessing that I would like to speak over you. That for your life, you continuously will be seeking. As that specific lady also went to the empty tomb, was seeking Jesus. And, and, and earnestly seeking Jesus. And that that is going to be in your life as well, that you're going to continuously seek Him. Heavenly Father, thank you that we can send for Samantha, that we can thank you for the period where she's been here in the church, where she assisted, where she was involved with the Facebook posts, and she helped. And we really appreciated her time over here, Father. And her season is over. She's going to leave and she's going to go to Dublin and study there. And Father, we want to send her with a blessing. Send her with a blessing that where she's going, that people can see this is a person who's seeking Jesus continuously. And Father, this is what I pray over her, that her life will be marked with that, seeking Jesus continuously. Father, I bless her that she will be a blessing to those people around her, wherever she's going, and that they always can see the eyes of her who are seeking Jesus, reflecting Jesus. Thank you, Father, that her hands as well are also going to reflect what Jesus has given to her, that she can give it through to other people. Bless her, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hi, Samantha. <coughs> It's always sad when someone goes, but you came with a blessing and we, we leave, you must leave with a blessing. And I feel God is saying to us that, um, to you, that you're, you must keep on being a sailboat. And a sailboat is that the wind is your energy and the wind is the Holy Spirit. So that the Holy Spirit will always accompany you and guide you where you need to go. So I'm gonna pray that over you. Will you put your hand on his shoulder? Oh, you're going to take this one. <laughs> Father God, we love Samantha, Lord, and we bless her. We bless her that she will continually, always, Father, um, be available for your Holy Spirit to speak to her, to speak through her, to guide her, to shield her, to, to give uh, answers of difficult questions, Lord. And I, I pray this over you, Samantha, that you will never miss this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
you may stand with us as we continue in worship. Yesterday we had a lovely um, evening of worship right in the center here. I don't know who was here. Oh, awesome. It was such a special evening, um, just giving glory to God and singing songs to Him and about Him. And I, I just want to share the scripture that, um, that, that we shared yesterday. Um, yeah. 2 Corinthians 3 verse 18, it says, And we all, with unveiled faces, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We who behold His glory are being transformed into the same image. And um, Dad Ken was just talking about um, giving. And in the scripture, it talks about you're, you're blessed when you give. When you give, you receive. And I'm so inspired by that. So when we give praise to God, when we look to Him, and away from our, our own wants, our own selfish uh, desires, when we look to Him, we are transformed. Um, we don't have to try and find things to transform us. He's the one who does the transformation. We ought to just behold Him. We ought to look to Him. And I'm so inspired by that. Um, I always thought we need to change us, you know? But it's God who does the changing. And I, I really pray that in the songs as well, that when we behold Him in worship, um, that we will, we will really start to feel that transformation. And I pray only God is the one who can open our eyes to see that, because God is spirit, and He can open our spirits to, to see that and hear that. While we sing today, please, please be open for what the Lord uh, shows you. Maybe it might be an image, maybe it might be a word, because we are not here for ourselves we're here for God but God put us together as a church um, so if there's a word or an image that might be to bless someone else sitting next to you or on the other side of the church and that might be a life-changing moment for them um, but we ought to be obedient so I pray that during this um, worship that the Lord will reveal words to you images um, to share to the church today let's be open for that Father we thank you that all good things come from you we thank you that you are a giver of good gifts. And we thank you that you are a God who is faithful and who has provided, Father. And we thank you that you are a God um, who is evident in all creation. Receive our worship today. We give you highest praises today in Jesus' name. Amen.
his name I want to teach us a new song if that's okay we can sing just the chorus I think the chorus goes Christ has died Just go upon a hill, a perfect Savior. Upon that day, the greatest love, the punishment that should have fallen on us. Upon Him, upon Him. Let's sing it. Let's sing that verse again. Upon the hill, a perfect Savior. Upon that day, the greatest love. The punishment that should have fallen on us. Upon Him. Upon him, upon his head, a crown of thorns, upon his heart, a broken world, the wage of sin, the weight of our transgressions, upon him, upon him, see Christ. Forgiven in Christ alive, we are the risen, and He shall come again. Praise the King, praise the King upon our hearts. His name is written, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We're pouring out a song of praise together upon Him, upon Him. Christ has died, we are forgiven in Christ alive. We are the risen and He shall come again. Christ has died, we 
even in Christ alive. We are the risen and He shall come again. Praise the King, praise the King. One name upon our lips, Jesus, no greater name than this, Jesus. You are true, you are true, 
even in my wandering you are joy you are joy you're the reason that i sing you are life you are life in your death has lost its sting Thank you, Father. Thank you that we could be singing that you are king. 
your king in our lives. And when we call you king, Father, we bow before you. We submit ourselves to you, Father. But then we also know what a king is doing. He's looking after the people. And we know that you're looking after us, Father. We cannot compare you with the kings what we've got outside. Because it's totally different now. But Father, in the old days, when a person was inside a town and there was a king, they submitted themselves to the king. They did whatever had to be done for the king. And the king protected them. The king went in front of them when there was a war. And Father, I thank you for that. That we know that you are such a king. That you are our father. That we can worship you. As King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Father, I pray that we're going to receive a blessing this afternoon. What we are over here, where we are going to hear what you want to share with us this afternoon, Father. I pray a blessing over Stefan, who's going to take the children, Father. That they're also going to get something of your kingdom this afternoon. Thank you, Father, that we can come and listen to you the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let everything this afternoon will be for the glory of your name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Marco has asked for it, that during worship, that you're really going to seek God's face, that you're going to wait for what is He going to share with you, what is it what God maybe put you on the heart during this worship? And I'm giving an opportunity now. If there's anyone who's got a certain picture, who's got a certain word or something that you want to, what God shared with you during worship, then I'm asking you now that you can maybe come and that you can share it with the congregation. We're not finished. When I started with this sermon, God gave me a picture. He gave me a picture of this one. A moisture meter. Now, I didn't know what it actually meant or what I had to do with it. It just didn't make any sense. But anyway, I bought one. And the strange thing is that I already started with the slideshows, and as you see the picture now, the picture was already on the slideshows. And when I walked into the shop, it was exactly that same one over there in the shop. So I knew, okay, that's the one that I've got to buy, because this is what God has shared with me. And what you're actually doing with it is that you're putting it into the soil. I'm just going to try and see if I can do it at the front somewhere. This is a plant which we got as a present. And then it immediately shows you, oh, this one has got too much water. Oh, I've got to speak to Renee. Let me try this side. Okay, it's still in the green. But what it is doing, it's telling you if there's enough water in it. Because what's happening if there's not enough water in it? The plant cannot grow. The plant cannot grow and the plant cannot produce fruit for what it has actually been made. Okay, some plants produce fruit, some plants produce flowers, but anyway, they are producing something. There's a result what we see from it. Then we've got a part which says there's enough moist in it, which means it's perfect, it's optimum. With that amount of moist in the ground, it can grow, it can give flowers or it can give whatever it has got to produce. If it is fruit, if it is a fruit tree or whatever it is. And then there's a part which says it's too wet, it's too much, it's getting too much water. And if a plant is getting too much water, it's also not good. So too less or too much, it's not good. It must be in the middle, it must be in the optimum. And then the Lord said, use this meter as a symbol for the level of the Holy Spirit in our lives. 
If it is too dry, then we haven't got time for God. We haven't got time to spend reading the Bible. We're not listening to His Word. Because the title of the sermon today is Hearing God's Voice. We've got to do quickly a thing, and then we've got to do this, and we've got to do that, and we haven't got time. In a spiritual level in our lives, it's dry. We're not optimum. We're not growing, and we're not producing food. fruit. And then we've got that moist period, that moist bracket. We're spending enough time with God. We're spending enough time in our inner room to hear what the Holy Spirit is sharing with us, what we can get from God and what we can put into practice outside. Because we've been planted on this earth to edify the people around us. We're not planted for ourselves. Because I've never seen a a tree which was eating its own fruit. It's always for somebody else. It's always for someone else. And this is how it has got to be done. And I'm going to confess, when I prayed with God, and I said, Lord, if this is now the optimum, because the image what I initially had was a 1 to 100%, totally dry and full of wet water. And then I said, Lord, if 50 is more or less all right, what am I? What is my level at the moment? And the Lord said to me, 40. I said, okay, Lord, thank you for sharing. So I know... This is where my I am. And I've got to work on it. And I want to be honest this afternoon. Because this is something that I want to spend some time on where I feel that the Lord is, wants to spend some time as with this afternoon. What is our level of spirit? How much are we allowing God and the Holy Spirit? How much are we allowing Him in our lives? Because if we are in that bracket, that it's optimum, and we receive and we give through, as what I've been sharing just now in the, with the offering message as well. And then we get the wet period. Then you get too much of God. Is that possible? Yes. Because each and every time what you've got, you spend time with God. You're reading the Bible, you're praying, and you're doing everything what has got to be done. But there's one thing missing over there. You only keep it for yourself. You do not share it with anyone else. You're not edifying, you're not bringing something to the people around you. And this is when you are too wet, when you get too much of God. But you're not, you're receiving, and you're growing, but you're not giving through. And that's what God wants to share to us today about. The water for this plant It is plain H2O, which is put into it. And you can put some vitamins in it and some nutrition and so on. And it maybe the flower will be a little bit more beautiful or the fruit will be a little bit better. You can manipulate it a little bit. In our lives, what God is giving us with the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, that's what's built into that water, what God is giving us. And that is what is helping us to give the right flowers and to produce the right fruit. The sermon today is going to be a little bit difficult for you, some, for some of you maybe, because it's going to be a little bit different. You're not only going to sit and listen to me, but you're also going to speak to each other. And we're also going to trust the Holy Spirit to speak to you during this sermon. Taking a look at that picture now, where you've got the different levels. Share with the person next to you. Where are you? In the meantime, I'll have some water. Right, welcome to the next phase of the sermon today. With this in our background, we're going to have a look at chapter 5 of Acts. 
I'm not going to read the whole chapter, but I'm going to take certain segments out of it. Because there we can see what happened to the apostles who were filled with the Holy Spirit. They've been with, with Jesus for three years. Jesus went up into heaven. The Holy Spirit came. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were at, at the optimum, I nearly want to say, what they could be. They were exactly in the middle. They were continuously receiving, giving, receiving, giving, receiving, giving. And they had the perfect example, Jesus, with them for three years. It couldn't have been better. I think we also would have performed much better if we had an example like Jesus walking among us. But it doesn't hold us back. We can still do the same. Because Jesus was the example for the apostles. He was the example for us, and he is the example for us as well. And the apostles are also our example. And other people, where you can see the gifts of the Holy Spirit, are also an example for us. Chapter 5. I just want to give a little bit of background. In chapter 1, Jesus was speaking to the apostles. And he said, you receive the power when, you're going to, when the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. So Jesus gave them that promise already. You're going to receive power. Like the plant is receiving power through the water to grow. Chapter 2 is about the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That they went into the upper room. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. And the church plant started. We started the church plant with Shofar Utrecht over here six years back. But the church, God's church, over all denominations and tribes and languages and all differences started over here when they were filled with the Holy Spirit. In chapter 3, the lame man was healed. You heard it just now in the offering message. The one who was 40 years old. He couldn't walk for 40 years. He stood up and he walked. Just the, the thing, thinking that just standing up, because if we take a look at a child, around one year, a little bit, sometimes less, sometimes more, it's battling first to stand up and then to do a few steps. This guy stood up and walked. It's a, it's a miracle and a miracle. And then in chapter 4, Peter and John were arrested and they were told not to speak and not to teach in the name of Jesus. If you've been with Jesus for three years and you've seen the effect of what it does to use his name, how are you going to keep those? How are you going to make those guys quiet? You can't. There's no way of doing that. And then the last part of chapter 4, it's telling us, that the people were selling their possessions, their land and their houses. They took the money and put it at the feet of the apostles. And it's not an offering message now that I'm asking to sell your house and to bring the money over here. But that's what they did over there. They sold the possessions and they laid it at the feet of the disciples. Now we're going to have a look at chapter 5, and I've split it up according to what it is in my Bible. I use the New King James. And the first part is talking about lying to the Holy Spirit. Like I said, we're having a look at, at the Apostles, one chapter of how they were involved with the Holy Spirit and what happened with them as a result of being filled with the Holy Spirit. And this is a very strange story. A certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold the possession and he kept back part of the proceeds. So he kept some of the money back. His wife also being aware of it, so it's a husband and wife combination over here, aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. What they were doing was totally correct. The Holy Spirit gave them that, call it impulse, gave them that word, sell your house, sell your possessions, and bring it to the church. Awesome. They're listening to the Holy Spirit. Yes. But Peter said, Ananias, now the thing is, as soon as we re read in the Bible the word but, then we know, okay, now we've got to 
Something is going to happen over here. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? They were filled with the Holy Spirit to do a godly thing. But somewhere, their minds were also open for the enemy to speak into their head. And they listened to that part as well. So they were disobedient towards God. Because you cannot serve both of them. It's all the one or the other one. He carries on. While it remained, Ananias, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but you lied to God. He was doing something which gave the impression for all the other people. Wow, he's selling his house. He's bringing the money to the apostles. But in the meantime, he was not doing a godly thing. And you can see over here, God was at work. Something happened over there. They were obedient to what the Holy Spirit was saying to them. But remember... If we are obedient to what God is telling us to do, the enemy immediately is looking for a place where he can come in. Because we're busy with God's kingdom and the enemy doesn't like it. He wants to break down whatever, whatever we want to build. And this is what the enemy managed over here. So that they kept part of it, they kept back. So they did it, forgetting their reputation. But they kept part of it back. And with that, they were lying towards the Holy Spirit. They were disobedient towards the Holy Spirit. And when Ananias heard these words, he died. He fell on the ground and it was finished. Some young men came and they wrapped him and they took him out. And then a few hours later, his wife came in. In verse 8, And Peter answered her, Tell me, Safira, tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. Yes. He was lying. Yes, 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 we sold it for too much. No. Then Peter said to her, how is it that you've agreed together to test the Spirit of the Lord? And as the guys came in who buried her husband, they came in and they took her out as well. And this is most probably one of the, what they say, the, 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 the most offensive sins what we can do if we are saying the Holy Spirit is telling us something to do. But in the meantime, we're doing it for another purpose. And that is for our own gain. They were doing it because the Holy Spirit told them to do. But they were looking for honor for that they were giving money to the church. And this is one of the most offensive type of sins. And then we see that God reacted immediately over there. Verse 11. So great for fear came upon all the church and upon all who heard these things. Not fear that they were afraid, but respect. Can you see God acting over here? If somebody is saying something and he's doing another thing and it's contradicting each other, and they're lying to the Holy Spirit. God is reacting on this. The second part in my Bible has got the heading of continuing power in church. And it's so beautiful that we can see the example of what the apostles had from Jesus. That they put it into practice over there. They received the Holy Spirit for the growth and the fruit as for the plant is receiving the water for growth and fruit. Verse 12. And though the hands of the apostles many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord in Solomon's Porsche. It's not a car. It means it's a type of part next to the temple, which was a type of a patio, a type of a colonnade. And they gathered over there. It was on the eastern side of the temple, on the side where the sun would come up in the morning. And that is where they were. And that is where they got together. 
in God's house. And that's where they shared God's word together. And yet none of the rest dared join them, but the people esteemed them highly. There are two different explanations for it, for this verse. Um, it's the one or the other one, or you can actually say uh, both of them can be used, but it doesn't really matter that much. But it says that the unbelief knew that you cannot simply join the church if you are not truly converted. You cannot say, I'm a Christian, if you're not truly converted. They could see it over here, the way that they were living it out. You cannot just say, I'm a Christian, and say, I'm hearing God's word, and I'm doing this and I'm doing that. You really have got to be truly converted. And it also shows that there's a unique authority and a miraculous power in the apostles of what they've been doing. Listen to verse 15. So that they brought the sick out into the street and laid them on beds and couches. Not that they would lay in the sun, but that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. We can read that script here. It doesn't say that the people are healed. But the conclusion we can make, if people are doing those type of things, that there must have been a result. That people got healed over there. But just a shadow of Peter was over those people. That's awesome. And also a multitude gathered, it's in verse 16, also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities around Jerusalem. They brought in sick people and those who were tormented with unclean spirits. And they all were healed. All were healed. Not only physical, but also deliverance. Because if you're healed from your spirit, spirit, then it's salvation. If you're healed on your body, that's healing. But if there's a healing in your soul, that's deliverance. Then you're delivered from the demons. What we can see over here is that the example what they had from Jesus, with the power of the Holy Spirit, they just copy-paste and you just carry it on. Where we can see the importance of the Holy Spirit, the importance of having the Holy Spirit getting into us as the nutrition or in the water for the plant. But there were some people who didn't like it, and that's the next part. And this is where the apostles have been arrested. Then the high priest rose up, verse 6, 17, then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him, which is the sect of the Sadducees. The high priest most of the time was a Sadducee. Now a Sadducee or a certain amount of people together with the Pharisees who made the Sanhedrin. But the Sadducees didn't believe in a resurrection. They didn't believe in a spiritual life. They only sticked with the Torah, the first five books in the Bible. That's all that the Sadducees did. The Pharisees said, yes, they believe in resurrection, they believe in angels, they believe in spirits. They were open for that side. But if we take a look at the high priest, he was then out of that category. Now you can imagine yourself. Now you've got these guys, they're talking in the name of Jesus. They say Jesus has been resurrected. It's very difficult to accept for the Sadducees, because each and every time they heard something about it, it is as somebody is kicking against their skin. It's irritating them. How can they talk about resurrection? We do not believe in resurrection. This is what the Sadducees believed. And the Sadducees were also only around the temple. You wouldn't find them in other places. They wanted to be too close to God as much as possible. They got them arrested. And they were filled with indignation. They were actually jealous. Because the people could speak out of their heart. It was so easy for them, for the apostles, to speak about Jesus. Because they lived with him for three years. They were filled with the Holy Spirit. They had the power of the Holy Spirit. It was so easy for them. And they were jealous. And they laid their hands on the apostles and put them in common prison. Common prison apparently means that it is in prison as what you've been guilty. You've done something wrong. And immediately there's a shame on you because you've been in prison. It would mean in nowadays situation, it would have mean that you would have been arrested and there would have been a criminal record against you. It's not so nice. 
because you cannot visit America with a criminal record. So yes, it wasn't nice what happened over there. But at night, verse 19, an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go, stand in the temple, speak to the people all the words of this life. The enemy is busy. The enemy is trying to stop God's kingdom. God is much, much bigger than that. He takes an angel. The angel opens up. The guys get out. And the angel gives them instruction. And there we can see that the instruction from God is higher than the worldly powers. And if God is speaking to you in the Holy Spirit and you've got to do something, do it. Do not be afraid. The instruction from God is more important as what the old worldly powers. And what did they do? They carried on. That the resting didn't stop them. Verse 21. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with them came and called the council together with the elders of the children of Israel and sent to prison to have them brought. So they came together and they said, okay, now we're going to talk to those disciples. We warned them last time and this time we're really going to yeah, have a decent talk with them. So they were basically ready. They said, okay, now we're going to have a good conversation with them. But it didn't happen. Because the officer went to jail and they were gone. So he came back and he gave feedback. He said, sorry, they're not there. And that's what's actually quite a difficult situation for the Pharisees and the Sadducees. What are they doing now? But then somebody come, came that we can read in 24. And when the high priest, the captain of the temple, and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one came and told them and said, Look, the man who you put in prison was standing in the temple and teaching the people. They thought, this will stop. We've arrested them now. They will be afraid and they're going to stop. But they didn't stop. They carried on. And these people are quite surprised now. So they went they arrested them, they brought them, and that they could speak to them. And then they said in verse 28, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in his name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring, it, to bring this man's blood on us. The Sanhedrin is the Sadducees and the Pharisees, high qualified people. We nearly can say they are here from the university many, many degrees behind the name, in front of their name, a lot of stars, whatever. Very, very important people. And now they're talking to a fisherman. Spending time with a fisherman. Now they've got to waste their time with a fisherman and tell them, stop with what you're saying there. But listen to Peter answered, what Peter answered. But, but Peter and the other apostle answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than man. I think there's such a lot of wisdom in this sentence over here. And what he's basically saying, we're not going to listen to you. We listen to God. And God is much, much higher as what you are. But they didn't like it. And this is happening in our lives as well. We continuously have got to make those decisions. Are we going to listen to God? And are we going to please God? Or are we going to listen to people and please people? Continuously we've got to make the decision. Is it going to be convenient? Is it going to please God? Or is it going to be convenient and pleasing the people on, on, in, the, in the world? And he carries on, and he says, Him God has exalted to the right hand of the prince to be prince and savior. Again, he is confirming that Jesus has been resurrected. For those Sadducees, it must have been another knife in the heart again. <laughs> because they're hearing now things which they do not want to hear. 
Jesus is Prince and Jesus is Savior. To give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. This is spiritual stuff which they didn't believe in the Sadducees. Peter is just giving the right words which they actually didn't want to hear. And we are his witness to these things. And so is also the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. In this part we can see that they are relying on what God is sharing with them. And they're giving honor to him where they say it's more important to do what God is telling us is what we've got to do what the world is telling us. And then the last part, Kamalia's advice. Now they're sitting in a type of a catch-22 situation. What are we going to do with this? If you listen a little bit to the government and what they're talking in parliament, then you typically have got the situation over here as well. They also don't know what to do. They're talking and talking and talking, but they also don't know what to do. And this is exactly what happened over here as well. But they had a wise man, Kamalia. It is said that Gamaliel was the son of Simeon. And Simeon was the one, not that Simeon, Simeon was the one who lifted up Jesus when Joseph and Mary brought him into the temple. He lifted him up and he said, Thank you, Lord, that I can see the Savior. And it said that Gamaliel was then the son of that Simeon. And when they heard this, they were furious and they plotted to kill him. And then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee, not a Sadducee, but a Pharisee, named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in respect by the people. And he said, just get these guys, just get them outside. And then he gave two examples of two guys before, who also made it difficult for them. At certain times they had followers, but there were no Successes, so it fell down again. And then he says in verse 20, 38, And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of man, it will come to nothing. Referring to the other two which he mentioned just now, that they came to nothing. And these are wise words. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. This Pharisee knew the power of God. And he knew you cannot fight against God. Because he says over there in the last part, lest you even be found to fight against God. Now, If there's one which I do not want to fight against, it is God. Because I'll be always on the losing side. I want to fight for him, but not against him. And that's more or less what this guy said as well. And he knew it. And then all the Pharisees and Sadducees said, yes, we'll do it. Maybe it was tea time that they just wanted to say, okay, let's sort out this thing that we can have tea and that we can carry on with the day. I don't know. But all of them agreed with it. Verse 40. And they agreed with him. And when they had all called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded them that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Not speak in the name of Jesus. Where's the power of a Christian? In the name of Jesus. So what are they instructing them now? You've got to stop with what you're doing. You cannot stop those guys. They've seen the results. They've are filled with the Holy Spirit. How are you going to stop them? How are you going to instruct them? Not to speak in the name of Jesus Christ. But they beat them up. They beat them up most probably 39 times. And I've read it. I'm not quite sure how they exactly do it. There was apparently two at the back and one at the front. And this is what they did till they get to 39. They didn't want to do 40. They did 39 for a certain reason. But they beat them up. And then in verse 41 we can read, So they departed from the presence of the council, and they were rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. They've seen Jesus Christ hanging on a cross. Now they could experience just a little bit of it with the, with the beaten up what has been done with them. And then the last sentence of that chapter. And daily in the temple and in every house they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as Christ. And we're doing exactly the same. 
not daily that we're getting together over here, but it's weekly that we're getting over here. Weekly that we're meeting over here. Not only here in the church, but also in every house, which means, let's refer to the small groups, where you're getting together. So it's in a house, and it is in a small group. And this is what I really pray that we're going to experience a little bit today with a few questions and a few things what we're going to do just now as well. That you're going to experience a small group. And that you say, yes, I can see the difference between a small group and I can see the difference in and, and a church. The church is where people are gathering and one person is speaking. But if you've got it, a small group, there's interaction. You care for each other. You can speak to each other. You can speak life into each other. You can pray for each other. And this is what they, what they did at that time. You've got people outside. They say, home churches, home churches. That is the way to go. The others, they say, churches, churches. We as Shofar says, both. We do both. A small group is church in small. So if we take those five different levels, and if I have got to put a sentence for each and every one, then we see that in the first one, it's unacceptable to God if we're lying to the Holy Spirit. The second part is where the apostles were doing what Jesus gave them like an example. They continued what Jesus had done. The third one where, they imprisoned the, uh, where the imprisoned apostles were freed is that God will intervene whatever is necessary, that what has got to be done, that it can be done. The fourth one is that the apostles were on a trial again. We're also going to experience it. You will have people who say, but you're nuts. And I say, yes, I'm nuts. I'm nuts about Jesus. Can I speak more to you about Jesus? And then the last one is Camellia's advice. But if it's of God, do not overthrow it. If it is of God, then it is going to happen. Today it's about hearing God's voice. And hearing God's voice means that you are seeking his face and he's speaking with you. It's not a speaker, it's a small voice. They compare the small voice with the voice of a daughter who speaks to his father. I've got the three sons, we haven't got a daughter, but I can imagine, because I've got a few grandchildren and there are a few daughters in it, if they come next to you and if they speak with that small voice to you, then I'm immediately reacting to it. And I say, what can I do for you? And this is how God also speaks with a very small voice to us. He doesn't come with a loudspeaker. He comes with a very small voice to us. And God wants to speak to us. There are some people who say, no, the Holy Spirit doesn't speak anymore. It's only for the apostles. Now, if we put it that way, then it basically means you're not going to be able to do anything. Because if you're going to exclude that God is not speaking to us, you're going to exclude the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You're even going to exclude Matthew 28, that Jesus said, spread the gospel. Because all of them were said to the, God, to the apostles, if you exclude one, you must exclude all. But it's there, God wants to speak to us. As the plant needs water, we need the Holy Spirit. We need the input of the Holy Spirit. If we want to show fruit and if we want to grow, we need it. There's one scripture which I took, which is not out of Acts, and that is the one out of, an, not of Acts 5, this is out of Acts 16. Sorry, it must have been um, John 16. John 16, 13 to 14. However, when he, the Spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you in all truth. For he will not speak of his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. Whatever the Holy Spirit hears from the Father, he will speak to us. So if we're hearing God's voice, we're hearing God's voice through the Holy Spirit to us, that we can understand it. But whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you the things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take off what is mine and declare it to you. Hearing God's voice 
is vital. If the plant needs water, it's vital. But there are sometimes things which are blocking it, that we're not hearing God's voice. I wrote a few th- down which you got out of a course where there are a few, and I just wanted to quickly touch to them. The one is distraction. Our attention is not focused on the right thing. Our minds is going different places. If we want to become quiet and if we want to listen to God, switch off your TV, switch off your phone, get a quiet place where you can be totally on your own and where you can listen to God, where you can become quiet, that you can cancel your distractions. Cancel the competing voice. Make room to spend time with God. That you're really going to focus on it. If I'm spending time with God, I'm praying. I said, Lord, I only want to listen to your voice. I do not want to listen to what the enemy is trying to put in my head. And I don't want to listen to my own voice either. I'm hearing my own voice enough. But I want to listen to your voice of what you're sharing with me. An unprepared heart. Because if we've got a heart which is full with fear and anxiety, it's blocking, blocking the Holy Spirit. The world outside is living on one thing at the moment, and that's fear. There's so much fear outside. And if we take that fear and we allow that fear to come in us, we're basically blocking the Holy Spirit. I haven't got to fear what's happening outside. The worst what can happen with me that is that I pass away, that I'm dead. But then I'm going to heaven. That's the best place I can be. So I'm not afraid. I haven't got any fear. Very difficult to explain that to a person in the street. Because they take a look at you and say, you're nuts, you're mad. Yes, I'm mad. I'm mad about Jesus because through Jesus I know I'm going to heaven. An unprepared heart So we've got to cleanse our hearts. We've got to clean our hearts that we can hear. A heart that isn't neutral. It's more focused on which we think what we need. Our shopping list. Lord, have you seen my list? And and please, that one is number one. That's the most important thing. Don't come to God if you want to hear his voice with such a type of agenda then it's much better not to spend time with God. We've got to have our heart focused on Him. And yes, if there's a deliberate disobedience, it's blocking. If we know something in our lives which is not correct, we've got to repent of it. It doesn't sound nice, but we've got to do it. We've got to look at ourselves. That's what I asked in the beginning. Where would you put yourself somewhere on that green meter? We also have got to look at ourselves and say, Lord, and we can ask him, say, Lord, what is there? Is there anything in my life which I'm disobedient that I can get away from it, that I can hear what you want to share with me? There's one guy that's also a thing is never be in a hurry. There's one guy, I'm not quite sure who it was, he said, hurry is not from the devil, it is the devil. So don't be hasty and say, Lord, I've only got 15 minutes, if you want to speak, you must be fast, because I only have got 15 minutes and then I must work again, or I must do this and no. It doesn't work like that. Take your time. Take your time, really, and sit down. And also, ask God, Say, Lord, if you want to wake me up at night and you want to speak to me, do it. And if he wakes you up, start speaking to him. There are so many testimonies of people who heard God speaking to them. Words, dreams as well, visions. Wide awake. God was speaking to them. God was sharing what he wants to speak to them. But if you're going to go and you're going to have a prayer and you want to seek Father, then you must make a time with Him. Schedule a time. Make an appointment with God. Say, Lord, I want to speak to you tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock. 
And you make an appointment with God. Then you seek God diligently. Consistently show up for God's appointment. Because then you also have got to pitch. You also have got to be there. And you've got to really seek his face. For me, it's easier in the morning when everything is still quiet. Rene prefers to sleep a, little, sleep a little bit later. It's awesome for me. Then I've got my quiet time. There's no phone switched on. I didn't switch on any computer. Nothing whatsoever. Make myself a cup of tea or anything like that. And then I'm open. And then I can have that appointment with God. The next one is come reverently. We must come in an atmosphere. Because he will not come in an atmosphere if it's not treated as holy. We really have got to, because we're going to the king of kings, we're going to the creator of heaven and earth, we've got an appointment with him. Yes, we can come in shorts, we can come in our pyjama, that's nothing wrong with that. But further on, we really have got to show respect for him. He is God. And that respect we've got to show everywhere. If we've got an appointment with somebody where we want to share God's word, we've got to be on time. And maybe I'm going to say something that you maybe don't like that much, but if we've got a sermon at 3 o'clock, we've got an appointment with God at 3 o'clock. You better pitch at 3 o'clock. God is already here. He's waiting for us. So we've got to be here at 3 o'clock. Seek God confidently. And this is beautiful. God is more passionate about you and being with you than you with him. He's more looking forward to that appointment with you than what you're looking forward to that appointment with him. God is passionate. I tried once, I tried to explain it to a guy. I said, if you wake up in the morning and you would have a chair next to your bed, can you imagine that God would be sitting over there? And God would be looking at your eyes and say, Are you awake? Are you awake? I'm here. I want to speak to you. I want to spend the day with you. What are you going to do today for me? And how do we react when we wake up? A lot of us are complaining because we wanted to sleep longer. Now we've got to get up and we've got to get showered and we've got to eat and we've got to go to work. It's an appointment with God each and every day. If we can wake up as the birds singing, if we can sing as well, we say, Lord, we give you all the glory, we give you all the honor. We cannot sing as beautiful as Yolandi, but we can try to sing. And then we can glorify God's name. And we say, Lord, what are we going to do today? What do you want me to do for your kingdom today? Wouldn't have been different. Because God is passionate about us. More passionate is what we are about him. Those are only a few things what I mentioned. I took them out of a course. Um, it's one which you can get on the internet as well. It's a course from, from John Bevere. It's approximately, I think, 17 different video clips of anything around 20 minutes. And I'm looking at it that we're going to have it as well. Which means if there are people who say, but... I want to hear more of God's voice. I want to hear God's voice. I'm battling with it. That we make a group. And that we are going to look at the video clips. That we're going to talk about it. That we're going to share about it. Because if water is important for this plant, so is the Holy Spirit also important for our spiritual life. And we've got to spend time with that. There are a lot of churches in my own life as well. Up to my age of 50, I was not... I didn't know about listening to God's voice. Things happened that you say, hmm, it's a little bit different. God must have been involved in here. But when I started to experience it, that God started speaking and sharing, you don't want to miss it anymore. I wish I was much younger that I could have experienced it. Some of you are still very young. For your life, that you can experience that, speaking to God, and that God is speaking to you. And we've got to rule over our own life. When I was busy with preparing this sermon, 
God gave me a picture of somebody in this church with a blue, and I couldn't see it at that time, with a blue coat or with a blue dress or anything like that. Caroline, it was you. God showed me you. That you were representing the congregation. And, and that the word what God was giving me over there, that we've got to rule and reign over our own lives, that we as a congregation must do that. Because we've got the authority. We can rule and reign over our own life. What you're wearing at the moment is the picture what I got. And you can look over here. I didn't think it out quickly now as I'm seeing you. Which is for me a confirmation again. God speaks. But are we prepared to listen? Are we prepared to go to Him? And we can rule and reign in our life. We can rule if we're going to allow God to speak into us. We can reign of what are we going to allow in our lives and what are we going not to allow in our lives. What are we sending away? Because the color of blue is a deity. And the color of blue as well is a sapphire. And when we started with the, uh, with the scripture this, uh, this afternoon, it was Ananias and Sapphirio. Her name is coming from that specific blue, from that specific stone. And it's showing that it's royal. It's showing that it is king. And we are kings and priests. This is also what God's word is saying. We rule over our own lives. And this is what we've got to do. And we've got to listen then to the right voice. As I mentioned before, there are three voices. It's God's voice, the enemy's voice, and our own voice. You can call it a selfish voice because that voice will always go about yourself. It's easy to identify. If it's about yourself, that you must get better from it, then you know, okay, that's myself talking. But if it's something strange, then it's another voice speaking to you. And if it's difficult for you, share it with somebody else. If it is in your small group or your accountability partner or phone me or Renee and say, okay, this is what God is speaking to you and you just would like to bounce it off, you want to find out. And get used to it. And then with time, as the Holy Spirit is speaking, you immediately recognize the voice. You say, that's God speaking. And it's easier for you to react on it. Hearing God's voice. I cannot live without it, and I do not want to live without it. And what we are going to do now is, I'm going to ask you to stand, and then we're going to pray. And after the pray, we're going to sing one song. And in that song, I'm going to ask you that you're going to become quiet. Yes, you can sing, but be open. Be open that the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. And once we've finished with the song, then everyone, including Marco and Yolandi and Derek, we all are going to trust that God is going to give us word picture or scripture for each other. Ooh, what's happening now? Yes, sorry. Welcome at Shofar Utrecht over here. This is what should be happening at the small group. Just trying to give an example over here. Because this is what church is. This is what life is. That we're allowing the Holy Spirit to speak into us. That we can live out what God wants us. That we should live out. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you that you are a father. And as we've been singing, that you're standing with your arms wide open. You're waiting for us. But you also want to speak to us. And you're waiting for us that we're coming to you, that we say, Father, Daddy, and that you're going to share with us, Father. I pray, Father, that as what we've mentioned, those blockages and how to pray, that those type of things, Father, as where they were mentioned, that they were highlighted at the different people in the church over here, or even the ones which you're following via Facebook Live, that they can react on that and that they can say, this is the thing what I've got to bring to God. I've got to get rid of this. And Father, before we're going to carry on, I first want to invite, if there's any person here today 
who says, but I'm not planted in God's kingdom. I'm still a plant which is standing in a, pla in a plastic bag at the nursery. But I want to be planted in God's kingdom. I want to have that relationship with God. And I want to have that living water filled with the Holy Spirit into my life that I can grow and that I can bear fruit. And if you hear this afternoon and you say, but I've never been planted in God's kingdom, but I feel that the Holy Spirit is stirring my heart now, that I've got to make that decision today, that I've got to start that relationship with Him, I've got to start it today. If that's you, then I'm inviting you to lift your hand now. If you've never made that decision in your life, to start a relationship with God, then it's now the time to allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your heart that you can make that decision. Father, there are some people over here who feel when they look at that meter again that they say, I'm dry. I'm maybe praying when I've got time and I'm sometimes reading the Bible, but I'm not hearing God's voice. I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to flow through me. I don't see anything of the gifts of the Holy Spirit which are flowing through me. And as all eyes are closed, I'm asking you, if that's you, just lift your hand, that's all. Just lift your hand. If you feel you are at the moment at that dry level where you say, I need more of God. I need more of Him. Father, you've seen those hands. And Father, I pray that you will bless those hands, Father. You know those circumstances of each and every one. And I pray, Father, that your Holy Spirit is going to fill them up, Lord. That they're going to be excited and full of power, as what the apostles were as well, Father. And they can make a difference to other people in their lives. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. If you're here, and if you say... Yes, the wet one, that's me. I'm spending a lot of time with God. I'm reading Bibles, I'm reading commentaries, I'm watching videos, I'm talking to other people about God. But I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit to speak into my life. I'm not allowing the Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit to flow through me. I'm just building up and building up and just getting fatter and fatter. And if this wet level is applicable for you, then I'm asking you now if you can raise your hand. Father, you see those hands. And I pray, Father, those persons are already seeking your face. They're already spending time with you, Father. But they know that there's more, much more, Father, that you want to speak to them through the Holy Spirit. And I pray, Father, that this afternoon, Father, that they will open their hearts and say, Holy Spirit, speak to me. That they're going to become quiet and that they will hear your voice. That they will react to it. That they will see the gifts of the Holy Spirit flowing through them, Father. And I pray, Lord, that they will be experiencing those gifts in the name of Jesus Christ. That they can grow and that they can bear fruit. And also eyes are still closed I want to refer to another picture when I got, when I was busy with a sermon. I saw a person in a wheelchair. And a person in a wheelchair was being pushed around by somebody else. The person in a wheelchair knew you, Father. Had, and I'm not quite sure if it's a he or a she, a relationship with you. But was relying on the relationship of another person with the Holy Spirit. Wasn't prepared to spend time with you and to listen to your word. And Father, if there's such a person this afternoon over here who has got to stand up out of that wheelchair, then I pray that he's going to raise his hand now. Could be one which is looking with Facebook Live, but Father, I'm praying for that person. That the person will stand up out of the wheelchair and stand up and walk their own spiritual life not being pushed around by a spiritual life of somebody else who's walking with you, Father, but that they're going to stand up and walk on their selves, Father. We cannot rely on other persons' prophecies and what they hear from the Holy Spirit. We can hear ourselves. 
You're very clear in your word, Father. You want to speak to each and every one of us. And we thank you for that. Father, I pray that you're going to speak to us. What we're going to sing this one song now. And what we're going to share words and pictures and maybe even verses with each other just now. But during this song, Father, that our hearts will open up and that your Holy Spirit will flow and that your Holy Spirit is going to speak into the people's hearts so that they can make a difference for the other ones here in the church. Thank you, Father, that you're a God, that you want to give us that living water. You want to give us the Holy Spirit you want to give us the gifts of the Holy Spirit that we can grow and that we can bear fruit for your kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. to God.